In this video, I want to talk not just about how The Eternals handles representation, but how I adore door how it handles representation. Whether you have read the comics or not, it's a well-known fact that a lot of the characters have been race or gender swapped, or in some cases, both. The likes of Ajak as played by Salma Hayek, Makari played by Lauren Ridloff, Sprite played by Lisa McHugh, and Kingo played by Kamal Nanjiani. When the cast was announced, there was a lot of discourse around these swaps and how it doesn't show proper respect to the source material. The what is always important is to watch the film first and understand why those changes were made, to see how they play out in the story that is being told in front of us, rather than the ones that have come before. Having now seen the film, I am happy to say that those changes are what make the story Chloe Zhao is telling. And if there is any issue with race or gender swapping, it is coming all from us, the audience. It in every way serves the story that is being told. But how? And why? Well, firstly, let's take a look at the how. The story of Eternals is heavily centered around humanity. Humanity as a species and the humanity of an individual. And how each Eternal experiences said humanity. Again, as a species and again, humanity as an individual. So, when you, my lovely viewer, picture humanity as a species, do you only ever picture one race or gender, or do you picture multiples of both? What other things come to mind? Sexuality? Neurodivergent people? People with physical access needs? Humanity is such a broad stroke that when you're dealing with a story as all-encompassing as Eternals, it is important that you have a proper representation of all of the above. And when I say proper representation, I'm not talking about the box-ticking exercises of old. No, none of our characters are here due to the way they look or due to who they love. None of the Eternals experience hardship due to the above. Their character traits and who they are as people shine through, and the usual identifiers such as race, gender or sexuality are as passive as the trees in the background. That is proper representation. Secondly, let's take a look at the why. Why is it important that there is proper representation? Well, as stated, this is an epic odyssey looking into what humanity is, and that kind of thing can no longer be told by a single demographic. It can no longer be delivered by how one or two people drew these characters 50 years ago. The Eternals first came out in 1976. Yes, we can adapt a story that is set in 1976, but why do that over one that better reflects where we are are in the world today. The original stories might be timeless, but how they are told and presented is open to change. Look at the many different ways in which Shakespeare is presented to us after 400 years. Those stories are timeless, but in order for them to survive and continue being told, how they presented needs and is crucial to be changed. The MCU is currently the leading franchise on this planet, and so how the stories are told need to be adapted and changed to reflect the world we live in today. And that is why how these stories are told is key. If you have been calling for the MCU to deliver us something different, this is it. Is it flawless? No. Does it tell a beautiful story about how people experience and find humanity? You bet you. And that is why I adore how it handles representation. If you'd like to see me talk more about race swapping in films, check this video right here. If you want to subscribe, clicking on the bell notification, you can do so right there. Until next time, Hakuna Machata.